Shares of Valley and Pharmaceuticals did rise today after that company announced CEO Michael Pearson is leaving and hedge fund giant Bill Ackman joining the board. They closed up more than 7 percent. Many are wondering who could take on this C-suite position. Jim Cramer shared his thoughts earlier today. Squawk on the street. Valiant's going up, I think, because people feel that there's a, there's a grown-up in charge again. I'd like to see someone from the outside, a real grown-up, a Bill George, another, a great CNBC contributor who could come in and be a monitor by the government. You don't necessarily have to have a guy come in from the outside and take it over. Well, with us now is Bill George himself. He is a CNBC <laughs> contributor and a professor at Harvard Business School. Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, would you take on this role? Well, I appreciate the compliment. I have a great deal of respect from Jim Cramer. Uh, I enjoy my job at Harvard, but I do have somebody I think is a lot better uh, who really knows his business, and that's David Pyatt, who was the CEO of Allegan for 16 years, raised the stock 29 times, and did a fantastic job. And unfortunately, Valiant made a run at it and forced their sale to activists. And, uh, but David would be fantastic. But they do need a dramatic change. And one thing I don't think they should do is retain Mike Pearson during this time. They have to take the lid off of this company and really get under the covers and find out what's going on. And until Pearson is out of there, they can't do that. So they need someone to step in in the interim. And I would, yeah. my candidate for that until they find a CEO is Bob Ingram, the uh, chairman who comes from GSK, knows the business. So they've got to move very quickly. I said six months ago that uh, they should make a change in the CEO, and I think they waited a very long time. Our Meg Trill spoke with David Pyatt this afternoon, actually. He said he's not interested, but he is working on a book about uh, that whole situation, which is interesting. Uh, coming back to what you said, it's sort of a caretaker role, I guess. Um, you know, is that enough here? I mean, this, you know, you can argue it that Mike Pearson didn't help or, you know, people are trying to point at the CFO today or whatever. I mean, this is a, a strategy, uh, which I'm not sure how you either double down on it. And it seems like if, uh, if uh, Pershing squares on the board, you know, they supported the original strategy. For Perhaps they want to see a continuation of that. But if, if they don't go that route, Bill, I mean, are you suggesting that they try to remake themselves into a very different kind of company? Absolutely. They have an unsustainable business model that's been clear from the outset that you can't continue to run a pharmaceutical company on 3% R&D and 3% tax and just keep acquiring. You run out. They became a Tyco, and it doesn't work. I think they have to move quickly. I don't think it's caretaker. I think it's a dramatic 24-7 uh, job that someone's got to do the, and do a total remake and get a sustainable new business model, get them back into being a real company. I think they're going to have to dismantle parts of the company with that $30 billion in debt and a lot of it coming due in 2018, staring them in the face. They've got to move quickly to reduce the debt. The best way to do that is spin off some of the good companies they acquired before they get run down, uh, mm. like Salix or like Bosch and Loam. But I think they also need to give us some transparency. They've accused Howard Schiller of improper contact. We don't have any information on what's going on at this company. We just get bits and pieces. Yeah. No one knows what's going on. They owe us that. And, and I think, the, the honestly, the activist hedge funds like Bill Ackman and and Value Act have been remarkably patient, perhaps too patient here. It's time for dramatic change and clean house and, and, and re take the thing apart and put it back together as a whole new company. Bill, uh, Mike Santoli here. What would a potential CEO need to know? You talked about transparency before taking on this role. Does he have to have some kind of real reassurance uh, that the business model, first of all, is going to work and you can service the debt, or just that maybe all the accounting concerns uh, are unfounded? How, how is that going to play out? I think you need, he needs to get in and really look at the books, or she, whoever it is going to have to examine the books. No quality person's going to take this job until they've gone top to bottom on the books and find it. I think there's a lot more problems going to come out. And it was just not the Philidor and a couple little things here. If they can't release their statements, that's a huge red flag. And he needs to talk to uh, some of the debt holders as well and see if they'll restructure the debt and cut some kind of deal with them because they're going to have a lot of government agencies coming after them. They're going to have shareholder suits. It's going to be a massive turnaround, 
And if they want to avoid bankruptcy, then they're going to have to move fast. I think it's salvageable because I think there's a lot of good pro parts to the company there, but it's been mismanaged. That's why I say I think they need a clean change and Pearson should depart altogether. And uh, while they're finding someone, I think someone's got to step in and run the place and start these changes and give us, the investor, and I'm not an investor, but give the investors some insight into what the truth is here about what's going on, not just dribbling things out. You know, John, as we look at the share price and the number, I mean, people had piled into this name, chasing kind of the smart money, if you will. Obviously, they're all out now, or a lot, or a lot of them are. Um, but if we're looking to the board, for example, uh, to kind of find somebody and make a move towards a different kind of valiant, is this the board that's going to do that when you're talking about some big investors who are responsible in Value Act's case, in some ways for selecting Mike Pearson himself, you know, supporting this strategy going back almost a decade? I think that's their make culpa. They'll basically uh, wash their hands of it, move ahead. Um, one of the things I think that we all noticed over the past, uh, what, five trading sessions, as it fell down from 56 down today to $26 a share, was the explosion in volatility and in the puts. A lot of that, Kelly, I think, comes from the uh, CDS, the credit default swaps, and they just got so expensive that rather than buying those, as people did with other stocks that have had similar types of drops, they went for the put options, which is an insurance policy against the equity. So as they did that, it just basically was a feeding frenzy, driving the stock harder and harder to the downside. That appeared to ebb, I don't know about stop completely, but it certainly slowed dramatically today. As I say, we hit 25.99 today, bounced and just ran to the upside, ran to thir over $31 a share, closed at around 29. If we stabilize here, volatility comes in, that'll give them the time to do all the things that the gentleman from Harvard is proposing. And Brian Kelly, when you look at the shares here, do you say, hey, at some point they've fallen enough, it becomes an interesting, a more compelling longer term uh, investment hold here? Yeah, at some point, it's not 26 bucks, though, I'll tell you that. It's probably a, a lot lower. I mean, listen, they, it, Bill, Bill pointed out three things, the problems that they have. One, they have to find a new CEO that's willing to, that understands the business, that can actually come in and create a new business plan. Two, they have to wade through all the problems that we know they have because they told us that. And then number three, they have to craft a whole new business plan and execute it. So for me, there's mm -hmm. just too many unknowns. I, maybe this is the bottom. I don't know. I think there's just better investments than trying to wade through all of that. And Bill George, before we let you go, anybody else on your short list here who you think be the right kind of fit for the job? Uh, there's a lot of quality people in healthcare. I, I think the question is, would they take it? You're, I just pointed to hear David Pyatt wouldn't take it. He's the best qualified. But there's a lot of quality people out there. Will they take the job? And I think this board, particularly these big investors, are going to have to give them the time to do the job. This is not a three-month or 12-month turnaround. They're going to take three to five years, mm. but they're going to have to move fast on the divestitures and restructuring the balance sheet quickly. That they can't wait on. That's got to be done in the next three to six months, and they got to move fast on that, I think. But I don't have a particular name. But the only thing I could say, back to the business model. When you have an unsound business model, you're building on a, your house of cards, and that's what mm -hmm. I've been saying about this company. It's a house of cards, and uh, honestly, if something's too good to be true, it probably is. And we've seen the truth come out here. Bill, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bill George there.